Hey, Nerd Herd, Dynasty Nerds here back again this week. We're talking top 10 Dynasty wide receivers, the one position that you're going to get 8 to 10 years out of. We have some uh, different opinions here. You know, I like one guy more than the other. I like a lot of people more than a certain player. I was shocked that Mike Williams was in your top 10. <laughs> <laughs> and CeeDee Lamb to the moon! Woo. Ready, set, hut, hut. Welcome to the Dynasty Nerds Fantasy Football Podcast, where we discuss dynasty strategy, rankings, and all things NFL. So get ready to geek out on fantasy football with your host, Rich Dotson. And welcome to the Dynasty Nerds Fantasy Football Podcast. I'm your host, Rich Dotson, and my fellow nerds, Matt O'Hara. Hey, hey. Garrett Price. How's it going? And producing, as always, Jared Wackerly. Hello. Yeah, <laughs> there he is. Last time I introduced that guy. Uh, <laughs> really so we're back. Take a sweet time. It's Dude, March first, three like one. Dead air to two. kick off the show, huh? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Could be worse. You know, we have no producer. That's true. No, it couldn't be. We did that for a while. Recognize me. <laughs> so we're back here in March. Uh, big week this week. Big weeks every week going forward. You know, this week we're talking. Even on the show, we're talking NFL. Our top ten wide receivers uh, on the Nerd Herd show. We're going to cover some tight ends. And why we like wide receivers, we're going to do a minute. But, you know, the combine starts this week, so we have a mm. big week to talk about the combine. NFL oh, free agency is a couple weeks away. And then right after that, we're going right into our rookie breakdowns, which is it's our bread and butter here of the Dynasty Nerds podcast. You know, you're know, you not going to find any better site podcast that's going to give you a thorough breakdown on this incoming rookie class to put you in the best position to, one, watch the film in the Dynasty Nerds film room and just get our breakdown here on the rookie. So it's really exciting Big time here in the Dynasty community. And then after that, of course, we have the actual drafts. And then we'll have some fun in the summertime as we get ready for the season. For the what? In the the summertime to do what? It's Dynasty Summer. There it is. Dynasty Summer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm all about it. That's what I was waiting for. You know, it's another Dynasty Summer upon us. Can't wait. Right now, it's almost Dynasty Spring. You know, no baseball. So we got more football to talk about. (laughs) All right. (laughs) Some big news here at Dynasty Nerds. Um, for all our viewers and all our listeners, we hit to sign a, a big partnership deal here with our friends at Prize Picks. I'm sure you've seen them around, yeah. you know, um, throughout Twitter and the Twitter sphere. We're going to be one of the first dynasty sites to go out here and push Prize Picks. And, you know, we're really excited to partner, partner with, uh, up with them. We're going to be hearing a lot about Prize Picks over the next 12 months because we're going to talk a lot about Prize Picks. And you're like, hey, Rich, Rich, what is Prize Picks? Well, if you're in a state that allows DFS playing, Prize picks is for you. What it is, it's a prop website, essentially. Um, it's the number one prop website out there that's going to let you place um, some of your cash flow on some prop bets that you like. And the big thing this week is the NFL Combine. And yeah. we're going to be rolling out. They have NFL futures bets on there. We're going to be talking about all this throughout as we get ready for the season. Obviously, in season, they have tons of fancy props. But right now, if you use the promo code NERDS, they're going to 100% instant match deposit up to $100. And what you do in prize pick, it's the best legal way to play prior props. You pick two to five players and over under on their projections, and you can win up to 10 times your entry. It's just you versus the numbers. So there's no there's no a group of 300. It's either you get it right or you get it wrong, and you're winning some good cash. Now, the big thing this week is why we want to get out here right away and talk about us is the combine. The NFL combine has props and they're up. If you've been watching film in our film room, you should have a very good feel of how these players will test. And we have some of our favorite props for you right now. Garrett Wilson's 40 time, a 4-4-4. Four, four, four. I like the over. I'm taking the over on that all day. Yeah, over. I wouldn't, I wouldn't put Garrett Wilson as a burner. He'll, he'll run low four fives. Yeah. That's why I, was, I was thinking four low fives. So... I'm with you guys there. Yep. So what they and what they do is they have these they have these things that are called four pick power plays, five pick power plays, two picks, five pick flex plays, all these different bets. So we're gonna give you our favorite four play right here. So Garrett Wilson over four four four, Kenneth Walker. They have him at a four four seven forty time. I'll take the over as well. Me too. When in doubt, a lot of these is just better to take the over. Yeah, how, about, how big is Kenneth Walker? Approximately two, two fifteen, five, five, five ten, ten, two, ten, ten about two ten. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, he's got some good north south speed. Four four sevens yeah. right where I kind of like him. Ish. So I'll take, I'll I'll, take the over. I'm, I'm going to take the over. I think he's in in the five, the four or five range as well. Yeah, Rashad just, White over or four four six. I'm taking the over. I'm going to take the over. I have no idea. He's not one of the run. burners at running back in this class. I'm going to let you. I'm going to defer to you guys. I've yeah. watched. He's got enough wheels. Honestly, I would not be shocked if all but like. 
two or three running backs in this class run in the four fives or, or, or less. There's there's only a few guys like four fours or, or I mean the four fours. Yeah. The Jerome Ford. Yeah, Jerome Ford would we'll be one. Tyler Beatty. Yeah. Tyler Beatty would be another one. Maybe James Cook. Like, but for the most part, like most of these guys, most of the names you know are gonna be in the four fives, maybe even a, a few of them in the four sixes, which is still not the end of the world. Guys no, like no. Josh Jacobs and that all ran in the four sixes. So it's, yeah. it's not the end of the world. Well, the last one to cl- complete our four our four play power play. Well, look at Easy for you. Good luck for none, not at all. Okay, <laughs> this is going to be tough on Rich. Put, put, um, put too many Rich keys. Eisen, a 6'3". You got to the six, over, right? 6'03". Six, 6'03". Oh three. Six six oh oh three. Three. Sorry. 6.03. Oh. Oh, oh, definitely the over then. Yeah. Over. I mean, his he's, best ever was what? 5.93, I think. Something he's like been that, he's like, been kind of tapering down in the past few years, mm. right around six. Hammer the over. That's a good, that's a tough one, but he is getting older now also. Right. So the 40 times, He's Garrett 52. Wilson. He's 52. I'm going to go over. Yep. Rashad White, Rich Eisen, we like all the overs. You get on you get on prize picks right now. Now, download the app, get in there, take all those overs and the four uh, pick play here. Now, for our Dynasty Nerds listeners, now we always want to make sure we take care of our listeners here that support us. If you hit any of the four pick power plays or five pick flex plays, and you're a winner. We are going to send you the most comfortable T-shirt you've ever seen. Matt's wearing one. Ooh, it's so smooth. I'm, I'm wearing one. I got the hoodie today. Most comfortable T-shirt you ever wear. We're going to send you one if you hit. That's that's what we're going to do. And I'm going to throw a little Dynasty Nerds vinyl sticker in there. The best sticker you'll those ever have. Those are some nice stickers right here. Those are nice. Those are nice. You get that one? It's kind of splurged one, on those ones. Really a couple really ones there. Those are very so, nice. All you got to do is DM the Dynasty Nerds Twitter account, or if you don't have Twitter, you could email jared at dynastynerds.com. Again, it's jared with a J, J E R E D, at dynastynerds.com. And if you show him that you won with one of those, we're going to send you a t shirt, a nerd shirt, and a sticker um, just for him. So now you're going to win four times or 10 times your entry. You're going to win some sweet ass gear, too. Or if you just want to say hi, hey, I'm here, too. And just email, just email Jared just to send talk me to an him. Email. Yeah. It's a lot I'm of D picks. Hey, you know, hey, God bless America. So <laughs> don't send me D picks. <laughs> right now, you know, again, want D-picks. and this is something, you know, surprise so picks right now, they're doing a combine. It's a big thing. But this is a site that allows you mixed sport entries, right? You can take the over on LeBron combined with the under of Mahomes in the same entry. Price Picks offers every sport that you can think of, like NFL, college football, NBA, college basketball, Major League Baseball, soccer, MMA, esports, and so much more. Price Picks has an award winning, easy to use mobile app, both on the App Store and Google Play. Price Picks is a 4.8 star rated in the App Store with rave reviews. So, right now, get on there. Prize picks. Use that promo code NERDS. They're going to match your deposit. Send us that you win. And now, if you send us that you win at any, any time, that you put some cash down in a four play or a five play and you win, you email Jared or hit up the Dynasty Nerds DM. And in worst case, somebody don't get, get a hold of you, DM Garrett. He'll yeah. make sure to get a hold of us. And I'm going to send you a Dynasty Nerds shirt because we love you. We love you and you're awesome for being a winner. So we're going to make sure you win twice. Winner, winner, chicken. And that, and that offer is good for 12 months. So at any point that you win, we're good to go. So prize picks, download it. Promo code nerds. Let's talk wide receivers. Now we talked last week about running backs and quarterbacks. You know, quarterbacks obviously super important to any uh, dynasty team. Running backs hashtag two to three year window. Now let's talk about some dynasty receivers in our top ten. Now in startups, we've been preaching here at Dynasty Nerds for the most part when you do a startup and just the importance of young rookies. So we've been talking about that for eight years now. When we approach these startups, we want to grab these young guys really avoiding taking running backs in the first round, sometimes even in the second round, because you're going to get high-end production from a wide receiver much longer than any other position beside outside of quarterback. So hashtag two to three-year window on a running back, you're going to hashtag six to ten years on a receiver. Mm. Right now, when they enter the season, Jamar Chase and Justin Jefferson will be 23 and 22 years old. Jamar Chase, 22 years 22 old. 22 today. He turned Just 22, 22 today. today. So come guess, September. guess who else had a birthday today, also on this list? You? No, Tyreek Hill. Tyreek Hill. Well, he's 28, 28 yeah. today. Happy yep. birthday, Tyreek. Uh, so when the season my starts. my daughter's birthday's tomorrow. Wow. Just as important. And my son's birthday is Thursday. Look at the week of birthdays at Dynasty. Speed days. Yeah. Beep, 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 so, beep. so Jamar Chase, who just put up a really great season, on September 1st, when the season kicks oh, off, will be 22 and a half. Jamar, Justin Jefferson, we tw- just turned 23 uh, a couple months prior. Yep. So you're talking to get to him to 30 to 31, which is like 31, 32 is where it's like, hey, nice knowing you. Thanks for coming along. Good job, Julio Jones and AJ Green. Yeah. Yes. 
Um, you're talking eight years pretty much here of solid production from these guys, which is an unbelievable amount of time. So let's kick it off. Uh, Garrett, give us uh, our top 10. What do we have here? We have a top 10. We, we have our individual top 10s. Sure. Okay. And then that all came together for a depo- or deposit, composite, just like we did last week of the, the top 10 amongst the three of us. So this doesn't sure. necessarily include our writers or anything like that. Just the three of us all put together. So we'll go in order here and we'll give us our, our top 10 each in order. And then we'll go over overall consensus top Come. 10. Let's do okay. It. You'll give, you'll give the consensus. So all my right. top 10 in order, the way I have them ranked on dynastynerds.com right now, always a fluid situation, but I have it. Justin Jefferson, one Jamar chase, two Tyree kill, three AJ Brown, four, CD Lamb five, which was the toughest one I had uh, here. And after it was all said and done, we we're doing a show. I was like, I wonder if I should add CD lower, but we'll talk about it. Debo Samuel, Devonte Adams, DJ Moore, Cooper Cup, Jalen Waddle, Matt, your top ten, sir. <clears throat> here we go. Justin Jefferson one, of course. Uh, Jamar Chase two, AJ Brown three, um, Debo Samuel four, Devonte Adams five. Um, at number six, I have Tyreek Hill, and then I have CD Lamb, Cooper Cup, Devonte Smith, and Jalen Waddle. There's a very notable name missing from that list, Matt. I know who it is, and I've got him super low compared to the rest of you <laughs> fools. I, I was half expecting to see him like sneak in at 10 and be like, oh, Mike Williams, what are you doing here? <laughs> oh, Mike Williams. <laughs> I thought you were talking about somebody else that I, had, that I had lower. No, yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, that one. Oh, yeah. We'll we'll talk about that where you rank that player. D- Diggs isn't too much lower. It's there's another oh, it's player. Not Diggs. It's there's, the one after Diggs. Yeah, in our consensus. Exactly. You have him much much Who? lower. <laughs> DJ Moore. DJ Moore. Oh, how dare you blast me? He's, twenty-two. He's my new Stefan Diggs. He which has I'm him at twenty-two. Super low on. He's twenty. Give us your top 10, then we can yell at Matt. <laughs> <laughs> what the <laughs> shit, bags? <laughs> All right, stop. All right. No one at number one, we have Jamar Chase. <laughs> at number two, I have Justin Jefferson. I was very tempted to put Jefferson first, Chase second. I'll explain why in a second, why I have them flipped. Uh, but still, those are the clear cut one and two. AJ Brown at three, Tyreek Hill at four, Debo Samuel comes in at five, Cooper Cup at six, Jalen Waddle at seven. Devontae Adams at eight, DJ Moore, the aforementioned DJ Moore at nine, and C.D. Lamb at 10. Now, our consensus, which the DJ Moore ranking is slightly skewed by one person. We won't name names. Uh, Justin Jefferson came in. But but correctly putting him way down further on the list. Just go ahead. (laughs) Justin (laughs) Jefferson came in at number one. A.J. Brown, or sorry, Jamar Chase came in at number two. A.J. Brown came in at number three. Tyreek Hill at four. Debo Samuel at five. Devontae Adams at six. CeeDee Lamb at seven. Cooper Cup at eight. Jalen Waddle at nine. And Stefan Diggs at 10. Now, I put in everyone that was ranked within our top 10. So that gave us 12 players. And that put DJ Moore at 11 and Devonta Smith at 12. Uh, Devonta Smith come off his rookie year. Obviously finishes wide receiver 30 this year. Now, let's start at the top here. Mm-hmm. Right out of the get-go. Justin Jefferson, Jamar Chase. It's pretty consensus overall. One, two, yep. One, two. You had Chase one. Man, I had Justin Jefferson one. It's it's a tier. They're tier one wide exactly. receivers. It, it's it's truly a coin flip. The only reason I had the switch, and I recently had to talk about this on a video with with uh, with Kyle Yates, and I took Jamar Chase over Justin Jefferson, and it was really difficult. But the reasoning was because we got a new coaching staff in there in Minnesota. Yep. We we're, there's just enough uncertainty. He's, he's tied to his quarterback for exactly. <laughs> and, and the, the Bengals offense just looks incredible. I know him and burrow have just insane chemistry. Uh, that's what I meant. Chase is, is tied to his quarterback. Exactly. Uh, so, that's so yeah, so that, that was the, like the splitting of the hair, sure. uh, but it coin flip. I could have easily gone Justin Jefferson. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They're pretty, they're pretty close. Um, I think T Higgins is the kind of the offset that kind of lowers sure. me a little bit. Sure. Um, again, and by a little bit, you're talking again, just splitting hairs here. Justin Jefferson, I think is more talented than Jamar chase um, from an overall fantasy football wide receiver aspect. I mean, Jamar sure. chase is a big play time player. And we're talking about Justin Jefferson, his rookie year, 88 catches, 1,400 yards, seven touchdowns, follows it up this year, 108 touch 
uh, catches, 1,616 yards and 10 touchdowns. Now, Jamar Chase, his rookie year comes in ju- almost just as good, if not better, than um, Justin Jefferson. Actually, it is better because he had more it touchdowns. Slightly better, yep. yeah. Yeah, one thousand. He had 85, 81 catches, one thousand four hundred fifty-five yards and thirteen touchdowns. Kirk Cousins, yeah. I mean, with the quarterback situation is a little bit off there, but I mean, T. Higgins was the only thing that offset me there with him. It's just like sure. he's also getting better every single year, and he will see he's been great. as Chase yep. gets double teamed, he will see the numbers. And I can see those numbers starting to split a little bit on them. And it will always be like a little bit of a hindrance to chase. Not that he won't put up high end numbers, but I think something like a situation like that, also including Joe Mixon there with Joe Burrow. True. I think put in a situation where it will hurt chase's chances to ever be wide receiver one overall. Now I think two guys, can he be wide receiver one overall? Oh, absolutely. I mean, he's, he, For sure. he was wide receiver five this year, so he could <laughs> easily, it's in easily. the realm of possibility. Could do but <laughs> easily. I just think, I think that, but that's, a, that's a, a hindrance of some sort. You know what I mean? Sure. Not worried about it. Can he be wide receiver one? Yes. But you're talking about two guys that at least for the next, next say six years, which in dynasty is a f- lifetime it's forever. Are going to be, you have two guys are going to be top six fantasy football receivers, championship caliber players. To me, easily the one, two in every startup pick should be one of these players. I only have, I only have two leagues that I play in that are older than six years old. Like if that tells you how long six years is in dynasty, like oh, man, wow. 16, 16 leagues and only two of them are older than six years old. So I've been five leagues older than six years. Okay. But you've been doing it overall longer than I have as well. Yeah. I'm in a 18 year league, a 12 year league. A nine-year league. Yeah, those are pretty uh, getting up there. The, the kids are walking and talking and doing arithmetic. <laughs> Look at them. So proud of these leagues. Um, <laughs> now, what, what's interesting is where we get to three and four because it's A.J. Brown for me and Tyreek Hill. It's Tyreek Hill and a, then A.J. Brown for you, Rich. But, Matt, you, you differed a little bit here. You have A.J. Brown as well, but Tyreek Hill doesn't really fall into this equation as much for you with him being all the way down at six, what makes Tyree kill the guy that you're like, I'm, I'm a little cooler on him. Um, all right. So, I mean, obviously I love all these players. Sure. <laughs> uh, they're all, they're all wide receiver. Do, ones. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Like yeah. they're, they're amazing. So we are truly splitting hairs and, and Debo Samuels coming in obviously as, as wide receiver three this past year and him being 26 instead of 28, it just adds a couple more years. So that was that was one of those things that bumped him up. And Tyreek has never been above Devontae Adams for me. And considering how close they are in age, they're only a year difference in age, I I couldn't justify him also jumping Devontae Adams. So Devontae Adams is, is one spot. And then that's why then then Tyreek, you know, falls in right behind him. Mm-hmm. So it's not it's not necessarily the fact that Tyreek is bad and I've got him down. I just I, I felt like Debo was warranted going up going up above those two guys just based off of age and and his finish this past this year. yeah this past season and just the unique I guess nature of of his role in that offense and and, and the fact that Devontae Adams was ahead of him to begin with I wasn't gonna I wasn't gonna leapfrog yeah. him you know what I mean so it it really is it's less to do about. Tyreek and kind of more to do about um, Debo Samuel kind of jumping him and AJ Brown being so much younger and, and having so much more upside for the future. So that's why those guys kind of ended up above Tyreek in, in my ranking. So I have Tyreek Hill three, so I'm higher than all of you guys. Mm-hmm. And the way I look at it is like you said he just turned 28. So yep. he's, he's still in that prime center of year. So he's got two to three more years, which sometimes when you say it out loud, doesn't sound like you have that much time going like two to three more years left. Like, Okay, that's the whole life of a running back for the most part. So to me, that's plenty of time. If you win three ships in a row, he's a true championship caliber player. It's the only roster you have him on. He's 28 years old. Just turned 28. Did, uh, sorry, I, I didn't mean to interrupt. I know you do it to me all the time. And I almost stopped myself, but I was already into no, it. Are you at all worried about how, um, I guess they were, defenses were able to take him away a little bit more this year mm-hmm. than in the past. Them using that kind of, further down the line as he ages they already kind of have a template on how to take him away that work kind of effectively this year and as he ages and loses just a little bit of that speed does he become a less productive player that's in the back of my mind so here's here's the way i looked at that 
with his age. Because, again, it's harder to put a guy that's 28 as your number three overall receiver. I'm going to guy there like Jalen Waddell. To me, Hill is a proven commodity, first of all. He's tied into he's in, he's tied into Pat Mahomes. And he's tied. Travis Kelsey is 31, so his days are numbered there. 32. 32. 32. So his days are extremely numbered there. And you're right. Tyreek Hill was shut down a little bit more uh, this year. Like his yards per catch. Um, his depth of target, they're all down a little bit more, but he did average a career high this year, six and a half receptions per game. And this is a guy who's never scored less than uh, like seven touchdowns, I think is the number, per his career. And in fact, he is tied in with Pat Mahomes where they're, it, he's so quick off the line. He's so good off the line where if you're going to take away the, take away from him on the back end, like I still like what he can get out of the front end. And I think his touchdown pr- production guaranteed with Pat Mahomes and the reception he's going to get per game, he's extremely safe. Mm-hmm. Devontae Adams has a little bit of a question mark. He's 29 years old. We don't know who his quarterback's going to be. And for me, when I'm looking at these other guys here on the list, it's kind of like, I mean, we've I love Debo Samuel since he came out, right? Yep. Wide receiver three this year. Had a big year, but a lot's changing there in San Francisco. The whole offensive coaching staff is gone. Yep. So new quarterback, that, probably. Reason why I would take and, and, and Debo Debo's only two years younger than Tyreek. So not enough for me to bump him ahead of Tyreek. Devontae Adams, easy to bump ahead because of uncertainties there. And then Cooper Cups, the same thing. 28, a little bit older there. Jalen Waddell, I love him at 23. DJ Moore 24. But these guys are still not proven enough for me to bump him to Tyreek Hill. I love A.J. Brown. I think he's a very fantastic receiver. Um, the best he's ever finished his entire career was last year. was wide receiver 14. So he's yet to even be a wide receiver one on the whole year. So, again, it's hard for me as a dynasty owner, even though A.J. Brown's only 24 years old, if I'm taking a receiver, it's hard for me to get past Tyree Kill where – He's a player that at any point, I think this year or next year, if the floor falls out for my dynasty team, the re- the recoup that I get from a guy like Tyreek Hill is going to be pretty strong. Um, there's, less, there's less injuries to worry about A.J. Brown. I mean, if A.J. Brown has been healthy, this is a no-brainer, but he hasn't. And we right. hit his quarterback situation is somewhat in flux. So when I'm looking at these receivers, there's a lot of different things I can say about these guys from a dynasty aspect that offer some kind of red flags. And the biggest thing about... Tyreek Hill is what you just mentioned. They took some of that deep threat away from him, but he still finishes wide receiver six on a year. And he actually saw his targets go up per game to six and a half. So to me, I look at it, T- Tyreek Hill is, again, when we talk about his first round startup player, right? I want to be as safe as possible. I'm going to get the best bang for your buck. And I'm going into this draft expecting I'm going to try and win year one. I'm going to try and, I'm not playing just to draft all young guys and lose. I know I can. I know as a player, person who's been playing Dynasty for almost twenty years, that I can mix my team with youth and age at the right appropriate amount to build a winner. And I think Tyree Kill is one of the safest guys. So if I'm missing on those two young guys at twenty eight years old, he's not old enough for me to bump him out. Yes, like like we're now starting to see Devonte Adams fall down a little bit as DeAndre Hopkins has left that first top twelve altogether. So. That's what I feel about Tyreek Hill and why I have him as my number three overall wide receiver. And I only have him one spot away at four. And my my biggest, because I understand what you're t- saying about how defensive defenses have adjusted and whatnot. But we see this as, as, as a cyclical thing in the NFL all the time. A few years back, uh, you know, the, the cover two was just, that was the mainstay in the NFL. Right. A lot of teams were doing that. And that was what was most effective. Offense is adapted, adjusted. Now we see the two high safeties to help eliminate the big plays. And it's really like a simple concept. It's not like this overly elaborate thing. It just prevents these gunslinger mentality guys from taking tons of big shots. So we saw the Chiefs offense adjust as the season went on and did much better with it. It was really more a, a mental thing for Mahomes to to be able to force everyone to dink and dunk until the safeties finally commit exactly. in and then go over top again. But right. Exactly. So I expect them to adjust. And one of the biggest things that we've heard over and over and over again is they need to get somebody to help open things up for Tyreek Hill. And I, I think that could be a real possibility this year. Not necessarily somebody that's going to take a ton of targets away, but someone else that's actually a threat in that offense to catch passes other than Travis Kelsey and, and Tyreek Hill. And it's not Miko Hardman. I mean, I, no. think, I think he's a, a gadget no. player basically at this point of his career. Um, so I do agree. I, I agree they need to bring somebody in to kind of help open things up for him. But 
who knows if whoever the heck they bring in is actually going to work. Sure. You know what I mean? They've, sure. I, they've seemingly been trying to do that for years and it just never seems to, they never seem to bring in the right guy. And it does kind of always fall on Tyreek Hill, Travis Kelsey and whomever the running back is. So yep. We'll, I mean, we'll, we'll a good see. deal. A guy like TJ shark, Will Fuller, or something like that could stretch a full field for them. Um, which might not be as great from a fantasy football aspect, but would really help Tyreek Hill and Kelsey. And Rich, I think your, your point was well taken on the risk of the other players around him. There's less question marks about Tyreek Hill. Yeah. Like there's, it's really clear that even though the window is slightly shorter, uh, there's, there's just really no question marks. Is he going to be a top 10 receiver for me again for the next two, three seasons? I think the odds are very high. Very good. Assuming, yep. assuming that there's no injury, you know, Devonte Adams, you have the extra year plus, we don't know where he's going to be in free agency. So, you know, they have that question mark. Um, Debo Samuel, you mentioned with the offense changing, and you didn't even mention his injury history as well, which is pretty rampant. So there are, there are a lot of question marks with some of the other guys. So that's what got me there. But would I love to have a 25-year-old there? Yeah, I would much rather have that. I just don't know that there's that guy right now that I feel comfortable enough. Although I would be lying if I said that Jalen Waddle even though I have him the highest, wasn't tempting to like move him up even more. He, I mean, he's you're not you're not far off on Debo. You're only a couple couple behind me oh, for, sure. for a guy like Debo. Yeah, I have right? him at five. Yeah, I I when we get to Debo, I got, I, I have. Love you're him. actually the low man on yeah. Debo. I, so I I have I have four five, and then he's he, he has him at six. Wait, am I the low man? You you're are. the low man mm-hmm. on Debo. Oh no, let me go. One, back. Yes, you Three, are. Four. Yeah, you have him after CD Lamb. Oh, I do. And that was probably you're part of your the low low low. <laughs> And I'll tell you why, if you want to know why. Right. Tell me why. Tell, tell us why. Tell our listeners why they want to know. Explain yourself. Adebo, Adebo Explain 20, yourself. Listen, I, again, same tier for me. So it's, it's you sure. know, and I have more Debo shares. It's just at 22 years old. <laughs> I still love him more. Okay. At 22 years old, CeeDee Lamb, where he hasn't produced enough. Again, highest he's produced is wide receiver 19 just last year. I think at 22 years old, there's we'll already 23 this all, year. All the rumors are. And all the noise is pointing like Amari Cooper. Amari is Cooper like, might be gone. And we, might be and gone. I, and I said that last year sure. because, because of his cap situation. And if not this year, next year. Yeah. Oh, so sure. he's tying with Dak. And his upside to me, I feel like Dallas still hasn't utilized him the way he needs to be utilized. I still think C. Lamb is one of the better prospects I've seen come out at wide receiver in some time. Um, I love him. I think his upside is there. I think he has that DeAndre Hopkins-esque kind of upside. Sure. So if there's any window to buy C. Lamb, that's where this is where I'm kind of like a little bit projecting here on C Lamb. And I said when the show started, I was like, this is the one guy I felt like I might have had ranked a little too high. But I think his upside just screams to me early DeAndre Hopkins. Because remember, Nuke was not Nuke early on. It took him a couple years to get sure. become into DeAndre Hopkins. And that's what I see in CD Lamb. Like I see the same potential. And the reason I have so many DeAndre Hopkins shares and you know, I, I said the same thing about Devontae Adams. Um, you weren't with the show yet, but I, you know, before Devontae Adams broke up, he was my number one buy. You broke and, up? And when, Baby, come you broke out. Oh, man. So what so I see, I, what I saw in DeAndre Hopkins was, because DeAndre Hopkins, same thing. Like, came out, then dominated as a rookie, was a high draft pick, still looked really good. It took him a couple years, and I made tons of move for Hopkins. I mean, I made one guy gave Eddie Lacy for DeAndre Hopkins. Yeah. Um, Which now is hilarious. Hilarious. So, kind of falls in that, it still falls in that category where I always preach on the show, what looks like an overpay today is underpay tomorrow. So, Taking some a guy like CeeDee Lamb, where I have him ahead of guys like Devontae Adams, Jalen Waddle. To me, I'm I'm projecting here, taking a little bit of a risk where I see him in the future, where I see CeeDee Lamb in that Jamar Chase, Justin Jefferson category. And it might not be this year in 2022, but I think from 20 around 2023 or 2024, CeeDee Lamb will cement himself as a top three, top four dynasty startup. Well, so you know, you know that's where I look rich? at him. You know what you should do then, Rich? What should I do? You should go on predictionstrike.com and you should uh, get a bunch of shares. That's probably not a I'll really bad you. idea. It's not a really bad idea. It's actually a really great really? idea. Great. Uh, if you go over to predictionstrike.com, you can do that exact same thing. You can look at guys that we think, you know what? Maybe maybe they should be a little higher on some of these lists. Maybe maybe the community doesn't value these players quite enough. And if you think Amari Cooper is going to be gone and Dak Prescott's going to only have eyes for him, then go get your shares of CD Lamb today. The best part is if you go onto their website or maybe their beautiful app for iOS and you sign up with the promo code DYNASTY, you get a free share of a player with your first deposit of $20 or more. That is a free share of a player with uh, first deposit of $20 or more using promo code DYNASTY. Tyreek Hill's at $9. <clears throat> CD Lamb's at 3 
Good time yeah, to buy so, some C.D. Lamb yeah, shares. So perfect time to buy C.D. Lamb shares because he's not going to move either to the offseason. Uh, a guy who was second half of the season was pretty bad. First half was pretty good. Um, so similar is there. I, I'm a big C.D. Lamb guy. I would take him very high in a startup, and I'd have no regrets about it. Um, might a little bit of the productive struggle there. So I do have A.J. Brown ahead of him, um, of Debo Samuel, and I do have C.D. Lamb. So I explained why I took C.D. Lamb here. Now, Matt, you have A.J. Brown as your number three overall player. Um, a guy who I do too, and you have a, so you guys both of them is your number three overall player. AJ mm-hmm. Brown's two dollars and fifty cents. Sorry, whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa. give my. me all the AJ Brown shares. So oh this is, a, I mean, the way I look at AJ Brown is there's there's, and I have him really high too. So I'm not talking negative on him here too. Is yeah, you four, so he, you only have he one gives spot. you huge difference. <laughs> Let's discuss. <laughs> and, but there's a part of me that like, if I had to take AJ Brown there, there's there's some like worry there because there is. no. Now, yeah. It's not just the injuries where he's missing these four games a year, right? It's it's also the roller coaster that you get with A.J. Brown, too, because he is. He's giving you those monster games where he's pretty much co- catching double-digit catches for over 100 yards. We saw him in the playoffs, five catches, 142 yards, and a touchdown. But then there's also half the season where he's getting under 50 yards in a quarterback situation that's in flux with Ryan Tannehill for a long-term dynasty outlook. Yeah. Now, with him leaving, could it better his QB situation? We talked about in the quarterback show last week where the quarterback situation from a fantasy super flex output right now is like in scary. dire straits. It's mm-hmm. really scary if you don't take two quarterbacks early in a startup because it gets real ugly real fast. Yep. And this quarterback class is not helping. So for him to get help, where's this help coming from? So by the time everything turns around here, he could easily fall into this three years from now where it's like, oh, he's 27 all of a sudden. Like time goes by that fast. So we, both, we all have him really high, but tell me why you guys have him as your number three and why you have him ahead of guys. Like, Because my big thing here is there's no way I could take A.J. Brown over Tyreek Hill for all the reasons I mentioned. Tell me why you guys would. I mean, I, I think it's basically, you know, it's it's age, it's it's upside. I mean, the guy is immensely talented. This this year was obviously a roller coaster ro- uh, ride. Brian Tannehill wasn't playing his best game. They, they, they're breaking in a new offensive coordinator after Arthur Smith went and, and left to go to head coaching the, the Atlanta Falcons there. So it, it was a bit of a riff, a, a, a rough road. And obviously AJ Brown, he, you know, he missed a couple games here and there, like he usually has throughout his career, but when he's in there, he is such a ridiculous playmaker and he's at a hundred percent that I went purely upside here, purely youth. And that's how he got up to number three. Cause I think I see, and we've talked about this over and over and over again. AJ Brown and Debo Samuels, they're not the same player, but I see them in a similar light. Um, just big physical type of guys that 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 do well, you know, after the catch, down the field, kind of all over the place. And I I'm not gonna drop him down because he's been nicked up here and there. I'm not gonna drop him down because his quarterback had an inconsistent start to the season with a new offensive coordinator. And he didn't have, you know, the amazing season that we all hoped he, he would have uh, last year, because I, I think that's all going to get straightened out. And, and, and even if it's not this year, it, he's young enough. He's only twenty four right now. He'll be twenty five at the beginning of the season. That even if it's not next year, twenty six, twenty seven, twenty eight, twenty. You know what I mean? There are so many years left on that, and he's just such an uber talented guy. Love love his ability to just make over the shoulder catches, adjust the ball. There's nothing Throw that he does catch. that 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 I don't love. Like I love his physicality. I, there's so many aspects to, to this young players' games that I love that there's no way I could see him dropping down below guys that I do see as aging assets, fantastic yeah. assets. Devonte Adams, Tyreek Hill, you know Cooper Cup. These are fantastic assets for the next three years, but. For the next three years. And let's not forget that despite it being him being wide receiver, what was it, 13 or 14 in his best season, that year he also missed two games Mm -hmm. on a per-game basis. He was wide receiver six, and he also played that entire season needing surgery. Right. Uh, So both both knees. Yes. Which is what he was playing with at early early part of this season was kind of working his way back from that. So I, I, I think when you're just talking about a raw playmaker, regardless of the offense, regardless of the situation, like... Imagine if things actually got to the point where there it was an ideal situation. Mm-hmm. Like he's doing all this not an ideal situation. Like if we were to doing this in an ideal situation, we we might be talking about him in the same tier as Chase and Jefferson. We have him as a consensus top four 
overall dynasty receiver. So it's very high praise nonetheless. And you mentioned, Matt, some of these older aging assets. Like, it's hard. Even some of these guys we have ranked here, like Cooper Cup, Devontae Adams, Tyreek Hill, a little bit ahead of those guys. But it's hard to justify taking those guys in the first round of a dynasty start-up draft where right. we I covet mean, this you. Cooper Cup obviously has been in the, the league far less than um, – Devonte Adams, but they're they're like less than six months of of age difference between right. those two. So I mean, Cooper Cup had a fantastic year this year, but I could not get him above eight in my rankings. I just couldn't. Like I yeah. mean, I he finished as the wide receiver one. It was hands down. He was winning championships all over the place, and I think he's going to for the next probably two or three years finish somewhere in that range. But I couldn't get him higher than that. I, I had him the highest at six, um, and. I struggled with that. I did want to put him a little bit lower because I have Devontae Adams at eight. I'm the low man on Devontae Adams. Uh, part of it is is the way that Cooper Cup plays. Uh, he is. It's not predicated on freakish athletic no, ability. not at all. And I think that's what gives it a little bit more longevity than maybe some of these other guys that are relying on, you know, the, these freakish abilities. So that's what made me feel comfortable. I still think he has the same window, if not maybe even a hair more than Devontae Adams, Tyreek Hill. Like, it should all be in that same range. So that's why I felt comfortable enough get, putting him at six. And, and it's fine in that tier to have a guy like Cooper Cup who just put on a historic season, whereas like he was averaging like 25.9, 25.5 Un, points. Unreal. And it was the second highest of all time uh, for a fantasy receiver. So uh, – a literally an all-time season. So right. regression's obviously going to be there sure, somewhat. Sure, sure. But again, even if it regresses to wide receiver five. A high-end yeah. asset here, a championship caliber player. If you own him, you probably were in your championship game, if not the, uh, close to it. So down the list here that we have Devontae Adams. Not a lot to go over, but Devontae Adams. Obviously, we have Debo, though, consensus number five, ahead of um, Devontae Adams. And I actually took... Debo Samuel in a startup over Devontae Adams. Got a little bit of a, like, ooze and ahs on it. But I'm just a big fan of him. And, again, same thing. So we're talking regression, right? We're talking regression with Cooper Cup. It's easy to sit here and say the same thing about a guy like Debo Samuel, who's coming off a monster year for uh, what he did this last year. And most of that wasn't just receiving. We all know it was a rushing line. His receiving stats, 77 catches, 1,405 yards, and six touchdowns. His rushing stats, 365 yards and eight touchdowns for a total of 16 touchdowns. Now, that's where the obvious regression is. About 1,700 yards, if, if a little bit over 1,700. A little over 17, yeah. almost, yeah, 1,770 total yards. So there's a lot of reasons. There's a lot of mystery there with all the offensive people leaving. Mike sure. McDaniel being the biggest one, the run game coordinator, gone. But you still have Kyle Shanahan. He's still going to be innovative enough, and he'll know what works, and Debo works. And he's We know that Shanahan likes to target. He's that one number one receiver as a big-time right. player. It's why we saw some regression out of Ayuk and George Kittle. And Debo seems like locked in, and he's going to get a big paid contract to be featured as a San Francisco player. So he's going he's gonna to locked up. If it's not this year, it's very, very soon where he's going to be locked up. And what's nice here are some of the stats that I see where – a lot of people are going to point to regression because of the touchdowns and the usage there. But it would make sense here when you have, um, when you look at Debo, one of the things I saw here was an interesting stat on him was his targets, right? He was 26 in the league in targets, but he was in yardage overall. He was still a big time receiver. And when it came to yardage, I think it was like fifth or sixth in yardage, fifth in NFL receiving yardage for the year. So, for a guy who wasn't as targeted as much, you're talking about a player that when the ball is put in his hands, doing a lot with a little. he makes things happen. Yep. So he's just one of those players, kind of like Tyreek Hill. Shan's going to put the ball in it, in his hands. You know, Mike McDaniel said it best in his uh, Miami Dolphins interview, opening interview, was saying, listen, sometimes people want to over like, think the NFL. The way I look at it is you have some playmakers that can make plays. My job is to make sure that the people that can make plays that are playmakers – Get the ball in their hands to make plays. As fast as possible. As fast as possible. Yes. So this is the same concept. Sounds pretty like, good. Yeah. It's why I'm it's why I'm so tempted to move Jalen Waddle up even higher. Well, and I think we do need to discuss that here soon. We're going to him next. All right. So we gotta give Debo his credit. We gotta give his due oh, here yeah, talk he about him. It, yeah. So for me, Debo Samuel is somebody that when we talk about safe, right? Like Debo Samuel is gonna be one of those guys again, finishes wide receiver what, three in a year, I think this year? Uh, yes, wide receiver three. Yep. With the fact that they use him as a rusher, which is great because when we talked about him coming out, we we're like, oh, if he could be like he, he's like a running back with his with the ball in his hands. And everybody's been looking for that new Percy Harvin. Well, 
Now the most annoying thing you're going to hear probably from here out for the next four to five years is, oh, he's the next Debo, Debo Samuel. Samuel. Yep. Yep. You know, these ones of ones. Same thing we talked about Percy Harvin for, what, seven years? We talked about then looking for the Tyreek next Percy Hill, Harvin. And then it was, but yeah. even then, he wasn't he wasn't a Percy Harvin. Tyreek Hill's a Tyreek Hill. Right, no, 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 that I'm saying. Oh, but, but everybody wants. always wants that next, like... Let the players be their own players. Yeah. And that's what there it is. There is not another Tyreek Hill. He's a freak. So, yeah. <laughs> so when you talk about guys, like he's already been like, oh, he could be like what Debo Samuel is. When you can see these guys, and they're talked about in that frame of mind. So Debo, Debo's talked about like that player, the wide back. People are talking about the Tyreek Hill, his speed, and mm-hmm. getting out of his breaks, and how Devonta Adam gets off the line. These are the dynasty championship caliber assets you want. So Debo Samuel, to me, at what, 26 years old, is worth – this high of a pick. And I might have him lower than you. And I have him a little bit lower to CD, but those four years were the difference makers for me. And AJ Brown is just too damn good to even like move him ahead there. But him and AJ Brown, C lamb are all really, really close to sure. me. Debo Samuel. There's nobody on this list. I think besides that one, two tier, Justin Jefferson, Jamar chase. I didn't look at his Tyree kill, AJ Brown, CD lamb, Debo Samuel, I'm willing to put Devontae Adams in that tier if you really want to because he's just so damn dominant. But that's the tier. And, and Jalen Waddell, even though I'm lower in my rankings here, like he's got his foot in the door. Like they tried to close the door in this tier, and Jalen Waddell's like, hold up, son. I just got Mike McDaniels. Let's see what I could do in 2020. There's a very good chance that Jalen Waddell, after the end of the 2022 2023 season, over there. <laughs> oh, yeah, he's pegging his way, his, his ass in there, can join this. He might be able to skip I, tier two altogether. I was going to tier one. I, I think he's already there. Like I, the one thing that was evident to me was I actually have Jalen Waddle over CD Lamb, um, and I know some people might might see that and think like, "Well, that's it's CD Lamb. Like that's that's crazy. He was the top prospect. Like he was the chosen one out of that class. Even though Justin Jefferson ended up being the guy. The man. Uh, CD Lamb was like the prospect that everyone talked about. But interestingly, like. The best season so far from CeeDee Lamb was wide receiver 19. In his rookie year, without Mike McDaniel, Jalen Waddle was already wide receiver 13. And everything McDaniel has said so far was Jalen Waddle. Like, that's the thing that keeps... Like, they asked him if there was one asset you want. He literally said, you want Jalen Waddle in fantasy football. So, you're telling me somebody already proved that he could do it, has the same quarterback that he played with in college... And now the head coach is coming on talk shows and saying, like, I need to get this guy the football. Yeah. Like, for me, I I almost felt like I was too low on him at number seven. Like, I wanted to move him up even more. I'm too low at 10. You're right. I mean, the guy just set the rookie reception record at 104. <laughs> Mike McDaniel's coming here. The guy's such an innovative coach. He's talking about, hey, if you play fantasy football, you want Jalen Waddell. And he just got the job. He's saying, I'm going to get this guy the football a ton. We saw what Debo did, and Debo finished at wide receiver three. He's coming in after a rookie reception record, and you're right. Like, he's somebody, when I, I looked at this, and I'm like, wow, I have, like, I'm looking at this, I have, I have him behind Cooper Cup. I have him at 10. I was like, I would take Jim Waddle ahead of Cooper Cup in the startup. Like, I would. And then I'm looking at it, and I was like, all right, I love DJ Moore more than the next guy. But, like, would I really not take Jalen Waddle ahead of DJ Moore? I mean, I mean, I definitely would. <laughs> I know we'll get to DJ Moore. You'll have your time. <laughs> you know, I mean, he is, he is, he just turned 23 a couple months ago. So to me, you're right. I think I'm low on Jalen Waddle too. I think he's yes. one of the best uh, dynasty uh, assets out there now. And I think if I had I'm, it, I'm I had willing. to re-rank this today, I would probably move Jalen Waddle. I'd still leave CD there because I, I love okay. CD's DeAndre Hopkins upside. I would move him up ahead of Devontae Adams probably. In, right a startup, Debo. in a startup Y, and I put him right behind Debo, which is good for what? Wide receiver Number seven. Seven overall. Same spot as me. Same tier. Hey. So I move along to wide receiver seven. I will update my rankings tonight on nicerns.com for all the uh, people going to rankings. I will update that. And, kind of, and it, sometimes this is why we listen to podcasts yeah. in the first place. This is why we have these conversations. Sure. It's, sure, it's, sure. It's, this conversations. This isn't the first time this has happened for us. No. no. And I will never, ever on this podcast ever be set on one player or one thought process in my mind. And that's, that's a beauty of things like, Oh, well last week you said like this, well, that was last week. Things change. Injuries happen. Uh, you see another game, another, uh, progress coaches changes. Like things change. It's, a, it's the funnest thing about dynasty. It's not like so this short lived three month game. We play it's, it's a, it's a long it's process. A lifestyle. It's about taking every information 
And every information is not just articles you read. It's the conversations that you have with your it's league fun. mates and the podcasts that you listen to. So this conversation helped me realize that I had Jalen Waddle too low. And there's a lot of people out there listening and probably like, you know what? I'm probably too low on Jalen Waddle too. The upside's just there. It Let is. me go make a move. And then in this conversation alone can probably help some of these viewers, some of the listeners we have, go out there and get a deal done with Jalen Waddle. And I know because over eight years I've had people, hey, because that conversation went made, made a trade for that player. Guys like Devontae Adams, guys like it's a perfect trade Justin target. Jefferson. Yeah. And they say, hey, now I have this guy at 22. And then seven years down the road, you're like, I just won my third championship. Thank God they talked up Jalen Waddle. I got him before that 2022, 2023 breakout where he's wide receiver one overall because he had 189 receptions. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to agree with you. I'm going to say Jalen Waddle. I think I am too low. I am at 10 as well. I, I think he definitely deserves to be above Devontae Smith. Um, and Devontae Smith, you know, he's one of those questionable guys. I, I kind of put him up there on faith. Um, because there's not much there to back it up. I, I did wonder about that because yeah, yeah. you were the only one of the three of us. Wait till they get to Sean Watson. As, as much as I like, I do really like Smith. Right. I have him at uh, 17. You have him at 16. Rich. So it's not like we dislike the guy. He's a mid second for us. But what gave you the confidence to put him in the top ten? It's all. It, I mean, it all goes back to the pre-draft stuff. Because yeah. I mean, we didn't see enough last year where I would be like, oh my gosh, I can hang my hat on that as him as a top ten, you know, dynasty wide receiver asset. Uh, but there were flashes, right? There were flashes. The guy can separate yeah, were. Um, and, and he can get open. He can make, he can make all the catches. <sighs> he can make sideline catches. His situation now stinks at quarterback and sure. we all know it. You know sure. what I mean? Like they need to, they need to upgrade that situation for him to be a long-term asset that is talked about amongst the rest of these guys. I know it. But for now, I'm I'm going to keep him there because I'm stubborn, and I know <laughs> I know what I saw on tape, and I know what I saw in flashes in the NFL in his rookie season, and darn it, I'm not moving him down until something bad the, happens. And the it, Eagles receivers have been the bane of my existence because I I make all oh, these determinations man. pre-draft. Yeah, love JJ Ortega Whiteside, oh, yeah, yeah. love Jalen Rager. Devonta Smith better not do this to me. Oh, he's too good. I can't. I, I can't take another Rager. one. Like those have legitimately been yep. my two biggest misses in Dynasty have been because of the freaking Eagles receivers. And I'm with Matt. I mean, everything Matt said, I can echo. Like he so showed some really good flashes this year, his rookie year, and he is a little bit hindered by the situation he is. The fact that everybody's talking about Eagles bringing another receiver, I'm still set. I think Deshaun Watson goes to the Eagles. That's that's where I'm. It's my lucky guess of where he ends up as Eagles, which is huge for Devontae Smith. That would be that, gigantic. That's true. Yep. Um, they I have the he, draft capital to do it. That's why it makes so much sense. And like when I saw his name here, like it stuck out because like there's guys I would take ahead of him, like TJ Moore, uh, Stephon Diggs, I would take ahead of him here. But at the same time, I don't hate the pick because I love the upside too. And I love what I see on team too. I mean, this is obviously we were wrong, but this is a player that all three of us had ahead of Jamar Chase in our rookie uh, film evaluation. We were all wrong. Safe to admit, that's whatever. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Can't I mean, be wrong with time. Well, yep. But we had Jamar Chase. We too. had him at two. It's not like we he had him but, at seven. But we all said that we, we, we told our people, yet. hey, draft Devonta Smith yes, and hold on Jamar Chase. We were wrong. Absolutely. Okay? Yep. Yep. But before that, we were saying take AJ Brown ahead of these guys. Take Justin Jefferson ahead of all these other guys. So it's about being right more than you're wrong. But listen, sometimes you're wrong. So to me, having him here for the leap of Smith faith, which essentially what I'm doing on CD Lamb as well. Sure. I have no argument whatsoever. And I think overall, besides the guy we haven't talked about yet here is DJ Moore, who we'll end the show on. We have a really good, good solid group of players here. But again, we're talking top 10. So it's like being a 10 man league. Like everybody's got something good going. Absolutely. On. But we, we, even though we've mentioned it several times that we're splitting hairs or it's really parsing this or, you know, whatever you have to make these determinations in trades. You have to make these determinations in startup drafts. Yep. Like, as much as we are splitting hairs, you have to, at times, decide, do I want Tyreek Hill or do I want Debo Samuel? Do I want Devonta Adams or do I want CeeDee Lamb? Like, you have to make those determinations in your draft. And there may be some guys in this list we haven't mentioned that you love that you would put in your top 10 100%. Guys like DK Metcalf, who's 24 years old. T. Higgins, who's 23 years old. Um, guys like Deontay Johnson, Terry McLaurin. Um, Stephon Diggs, who I think is a great buy low right now. I'm a little bit... 
I love Terry McLaurin as, next to the, as much as the next guy. That quarterback situation is unknown. And Terry McLaurin is going to be 727 years old when the league starts. So he's going to be a little bit older. But Deontay Johnson, Chris Godwin, who's about to get a long-term deal. Calvin Ridley, who's almost 28 and a little bit of iffiness there too, but really talented receivers. But the one that we didn't mention here uh, that Matt's really low on is DJ Moore. So we'll end it here on DJ Moore, a guy who's 25 years old when the season starts, who's put up 1,200 yards every single year, but also only four touchdowns every single year, who has been absolutely hindered by his quarterback situation. Now, I hope somehow maybe that Carolina could find a way to get Deshaun Watson and pull off the capital that they have to get him, which would be make DJ Moore potentially, in my eyes, a top three overall fantasy receiver. But that's not the situation. He's constantly been hindered by his quarterback situation. But what what I love about it is that he still be able to produce at a pretty solid level with such bad quarterback play. So you love A.J. Brown despite the play of that's going around him. Why are you so low on D.J. Moore when me and Garrett are obviously right. high? <laughs> like Seth Rogen high. Like we're like, ooh, <laughs> this is fun. So what's the deal? Some like purple nerve. Obviously, stuff, you're wrong yeah. about Stephon Diggs. So tell us why you're wrong about DJ Moore. Clearly, I was wrong about Stephon Diggs. I, Clearly, I do you're wrong think about he DJ was Moore. better than than Clearly. advertised by me. Um, but DJ Moore, he he was a guy that he's he's. I don't want to say this because it's not the way it's going to come across wrong because he's not. But he seems like one of these middling wide receiver two. Jags to me like he doesn't seem special Can you be in a any Jag way if you're a wide receiver that's two? what I mean a high end wide receiver that's two? what I mean that's what I mean that's why I, uh, I didn't want to say it that way sure but when you're trying to go for championships he is that like he's just like a he's like a middle of the road wide well, receiver let me ask two. you this question he is he'd be great if he was your third wide receiver Dude, but a couple not, touchdowns more and he's in the back I'm not talking we're not talking that we're talking top 10 guys I know I am at 22 probably a little bit too low definitely too low. way too low Probably a little low. bit too low, but what's the 22, Would you 18, make, like, let honestly, me ask you this. like that's where I see him. So what's the, difference? let me ask you this question and, I, and I'm being genuine. I'm being genuine here. If there was a wide receiver that you knew year in, year out was going to produce somewhere between wide receiver 14 and 19. So okay. never quite a wide receiver one, but always like a really, really good wide receiver two. And he did that for eight years. Yeah. Would he be worth taking as your wide receiver 12 or 10 in this year's draft? Wait, in this year, like in, in a this startup year, if draft. a startup draft. No. Really? If he's going to get you 14 to so you 19? Would, so you would no, rather have would rather a guy that has for a higher, higher two upside. top five seasons, but then is never in the top 10 again? Yep. Get me some, Interesting. Get me, get me some championships. Would. Yeah, dude. What? I think the upside's higher than that. I, I think, think, I think listen, so, too, but listen, I'm, I'm listen, saying. DJ Moore literally scores four more, like just four more, touch, eight, eight touchdown season. You're talking about like low-end wide receiver one of I mean, you could talk about. This I can have the same conversation about Allen Robinson. See, These guys wide just, receiver two consistency they're just, they're good is guys. huge. They're good guys to have. Don't get me wrong. We're talking top ten, like top ten guy. He can't sniff the top ten in my. He he just can't. I love him. You're I saying he will never be a top ten receiver. He will never finish. The he season. will never finish in my top ten. No, no, no. I'm saying, will he finish? <laughs> not yours. Not yours. That's not the same. Mike Williams was in your top ten. So. And I'm where saying, did he finish this year? <laughs> uh, what I'm saying is he will never, not one time, finish as a top 10 wide receiver for fantasy football and PPR leagues. He could possibly touch the top 10. Okay. But that does not make him a top 10 dynasty wide receiver asset. I think you are undervaluing consistency. Okay. With with a ceiling. Like, I feel with, like with a much had, higher ceiling. Yes. Okay. I understand. Like, I what's, understand his highest, his, what's his highest finish ever? What's A.J. Brown's highest finish? Wide receiver 16. Wide receiver 14. Okay. Browns, you have Higher. Your third C overall C player is wide receiver 14. What's CD Lambs? Higher. 19. Yeah, 19. <laughs> 19. Exactly. So I think I think the big thing with more, like, I understand, like, your point of, like, oh, this is wide receiver two. He's never going to get there. Like, I just see the ceiling of, like, he just needs a little bit better quarterback play. Like, a, I mean, and a doing, little bit of luck. Get Cam Newton, Teddy Bridgewater, and Sam Darnold. So he literally just needs a little bit more. And it, and he has been without Christian McCaffrey to move the ball downfield the last two years as well. He did, if his team just get in the end zone a little bit more, and his touchdown production goes up a little bit more, and he sees a small spike in his production, which is clearly 
capable to be there. You're talking about a consistent, I think a consistent mid, like you say 14 and 19. I'm looking at the, I look at DJ Moore go, going from anywhere from pick like wide receiver eight to wide receiver 16 in that range. I was, I was taking the low, like conservative. So low yeah. So I'm with you. Like, obviously I, I completely dis- disagree. Uh, you and I had the same conversation about Stefan Diggs a couple years He'll ago. He'll come around. He'll come around. So I well, believe yeah. in him. Well, yeah. DJ Moore's gonna be our smelling salt. Like Matt, get a load of this. Like, oh, DJ Moore. <laughs> <laughs> Can we sell that DJ Moore smelling salt? <laughs> yeah, we love the <laughs> dynasty <laughs> nerds. <Moore! laughs> Is that two O's and one O? Oh, oh, that was Elijah Moore. Dang it! Oh, ooh, that's good too. He's about to creep up too. So that's it. That's our top ten. I bet you I have Elijah Moore higher than him. I. Uh, you probably do. I'm, I'm sure uh, I do. For, it would not surprise for me. a guy that knows wide receivers so well. Sometimes he knows so little, but we'll see. We'll There's see. There's just guys I feel like it's are never going. They're never <laughs> going to get to that elite level. So what's the point of putting them there? I'd you make guys, a bet, I'd make a bet with them, but I would 100 percent like every bet we've ever made in the it. show. Do well, it. We make a bet I'll all track and it. we forget. We make bets all the time. On the show remember. every single year. Track what do we never do? remember? We're one. Gonna bet, do does he tell- ever reach a certain no, no, level? I would bet this year that DJ Moore finishes as a, it depends on the quarterback situation. Yeah, exactly. How are you going to make that bet? I made the bet right now. He finishes a top 15 receiver. I don't even know who his quarterback is. Top 15? Top Matt, 15. That would be his highest finish. I'll take that bet. What's the, what's the, uh, well, yeah, what what's happened? the consequence? What, what does it matter? We could bet a million dollars. Nobody's going to remember. <laughs> I'm going to tell Siri it's to March remind 1st. me. It's I'm sorry, March guys, 1st. but technology's so gonna, a thing. Set a, so set a reminder yeah. and for Christmas, on Christmas morning, Christmas, you text not, us, <laughs> Christmas gonna, morning. I don't care. I'll, I'll forget that day. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I don't, I don't what know. What are you betting? We'll figure, we'll figure, we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. Which we'll It's never going to happen. It's never going to happen. Make it fun. You're not going to figure it out. I don't know. You won't. You know, smack him in the face. No, open, open hand out. smack no, to the face. Come on. Come on. No. I kind of like shock you. jock. I don't want to knock him out. Man. Come on. You see this guy? <laughs> <laughs> smack. I've only been knocked smack, out once in my bet. life. Smack. Bet. I know. I only smacked him once. <laughs> no. All right, moving on. I've Jack. seen you knocked out <laughs> once. As and the well. show. Yeah. So. Not by me, though. No, not by you. And you were pretty drunk. Well, the only really time I got knocked out was I chugged a whole bottle of vodka. Promo code winter <laughs> ends tomorrow. Oh, man. Well, we're recording this on 3 1. So, so it's tomorrow when the podcast was released, when you guys get to listen. It's promo code that's it. winter. Last pro, pro, yeah, that's it. 15% Dead. off. That's it. It's Dead. done for a while until our next promo code, which yep. won't be probably for a couple months. Yeah. Um, 15% off, get that film room and everything. And then make sure you sign up for that prize pick, nerds. Get some shirts. We're going into the nerd episode. We're going to talk about some tight ends. Next week, we're covering the Combine. Then I'll be in Mexico. So if they get enough news on free agency, they'll cover free agency. If not, we'll cover that when I get back. And then it's all rookies. I can't wait for the Combine. Just get all those. I just want to get all the measurables. All the numbers. Small hand. Smells like cabbage. Adios.